Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by. Now I asked all of you at the end of last year if you'd be interested in us tying some warm water flies, and the response was overwhelmingly positive that a lot of you folks out there want to see some bass bugs and panfish poppers. So this year I picked up a couple of books already. First one was Bass Flies by Dick Stewart. Pretty good book. Uh, I may do a review on this one later, but one of the viewers who had this book also recommended another book by Dick Stewart. It was Flies for Bass and Panfish. So thank you, Maza Men, for recommending it. This is an amazing book. And while it was published in 1992 and is no longer in print, I still might do a review on it because this is just an amazing book. And you can still find used copies out there for about eight or ten dollars. Now it's not a how-to book, but it is definitely a pattern index. I mean, it's got all kinds of hair bug frogs and crayfish patterns and mice patterns, all kinds of bait fish. So it's a really, really cool book. Now there are a lot of challenging flies in this book. And the first one I want to do for this channel, I'm not picking one of these super challenging flies, but I did find one by Lefty Cray. And if you've been fly fishing for any number of years, you know Lefty Cray, the legend. So he came up with this pattern. He called it Lefty's Red and White. And at one point, he considered this fly to be his single most effective underwater fly for bass. So that's some pretty high praise. Now, one of the cool things about this fly, it doesn't use any really expensive materials. None of your nice, expensive hackle, really just your strong saddle hackle or neck hackle, this kind of stuff right here, in a red and a white. Now, I don't know what it is about red and white, but bass must love it because there are so many old patterns out there that are just red and white. Not just, you know, flies, but hard baits too. So again, this pattern's not too difficult. It's a general bait fish pattern. I think it's pretty cool, and I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise. Lefty's red and white. I'm tying this on a size six. It's a two X long, one extra heavy competition hook. And I've stepped up my thread to a 210. It's a red 210 denier. I'll lay a base down almost to the point of the hook. Don't want to take it all the way back because there's not a whole lot going on in this fly. We've got a tail and then we've got some hackles put pretty close together. So the first component we're going to tie in is pearl crystal flash, at least a, a hook um, body length. So I'm going to catch this in right here on my side and then fold it back over with a couple wraps on the other side. So now I'll go ahead and snip it off. But that's the first part of our tail. And then the cool part of this fly is this strong saddle ha or neck hackle whatever saddle hackle, the really cheap stuff that's a big clump of it for four or five dollars that you think you're never going to use. Well, if you tie a lot of these, you will use them because this is six of those feathers right here. So the cool thing about this, um, don't worry about getting the tips lined up. If they're not lined up, it's probably going to be just as effective, might even be more so. So you're going to have them going all over the place. But just catch these in on top, right here where you did your tail and then I'm going to leave those stubs in at least you know half of the hook shank just because I don't want them pulling out on me I'll go ahead and trim these off right here and then smooth it out get a little bit of a taper right here it's not all that important but it will make wrapping the hackle a little bit easier so take it back not all the way back is we're wrapping some hackle, but we're not putting a whole lot of wraps. Some really long hackle, but not a not real bushy. So I'm leaving that, some red showing in the back, and I'm gonna take some red strong hackle here. And I'm gonna catch this in concave side toward the hook. Try to keep it a little bit perpendicular right here. It'll just make them look a little bit better when we wrap them. And I'm going to take my thread up to about where I'm going to stop wrapping the, this red hackle. Remember, we're going to have a red, then a white, and another red. So that's probably good right there. And I'm going to do about four turns on the back. One wrap right in front of the other. See how long this stuff is? 
I mean, you, this is not the kind of hackle you'd use on a dry fly. So two thread wraps right here to catch this in. And what I've been doing, I've been putting some tension on it and then just pulling all this back and then making a couple of extra wraps right here. That way I can snip everything that's going forward from where I'm holding. So it'll make it just a little bit cleaner transition going from this red to the white. Now we do the same thing with the, another white hackle feather. Just gonna catch it in concave side toward the hook. Get a little bit of bare stem right there. And take it back so my first wraps of this white are right in front of the red. Now I'll take my thread back up to where about where I'm going to stop wrapping that white. Snip off this butt end. And with this one, four or five turns as well. Don't worry if you see a little bit of that red showing through. That's going to be just fine. Okay. Let's catch this in with two wraps and then do the same thing. Put some tension on my thread, pull this white back a little bit just to make a couple of extra wraps right here. And now it should be a little easier to snip off just the white we want to snip and not any of that body hackle. So I'm going to smooth this little area right here out and catch in my last red hackle, just another piece, pretty much the same you know, fiber length and density as, as the one we just did. So, one, and it should have a little bit of bare stem showing. That should be fine right there. And I'm going to take this in to where I'm going to stop wrapping that red hackle. And it'll leave us just a little bit of room for a, a flat head right there. So maybe I want to smooth that out. Take my thread back there. And this one, same thing four or five turns right here, one right in front of the other. Let's see, you want to go one more? Sure, we've got room and a long enough feather. So maybe two wraps right here. Put some tension on this thread. Try to pull these back right here. And then take this down to not all the way. I want to still be able to snip it and get a clean head. Ooh, did I hit my thread? If not, I almost did. I think I nicked my thread, so I'm gonna have to spend a few extra wraps right here getting through that. But we're good. We're good. We got enough room for a whip finish and a drop of head cement. And lefties, red and white, bass pattern is done. So pretty cool looking fly, not real hard to tie. Just take your time and pick the right size hackle, even though it's big, huge, oversized hackle. But drop of head cement and this guy's done. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.